Hey there, happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to continue pressing our strips for the granny square block tonight. We got cut off last night. Uh, I think we're going to get these done being pressed and we will start uh, cutting them up into little patchworky looking pieces. So that is the plan for tonight. Thanks for coming tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. So thank you again for joining me. Let's get pressing more of our little strips and I have something cute to share with you guys. So let's get going. All right, look at our label uh, came in the mail today. So this is the uh, koala quilt label. Uh, it'll be this plus uh, we have that extra koala, so that embroidery. So that's going to go on the top. And then the two together will be a nice big label. And you know what? I'm going to just give it a press right now. So I got it printed at spoonflower.com. Uh, and this is, you can get like an eight inch sample piece from there. And that's what I did. So that's why I designed it uh, to be about eight inches. We have just enough for a seam allowance in there. I am so excited for it. So you guys, starting on the 16th, uh, of this month, we will start stitching this onto the koala quilt. Uh, and we are going to have our koala quilt um, auction coming up soon, too. So stay tuned to your emails. Uh, there will be lots more information on that soon. But we did get the quilt label in today. Pretty excited about that. Awesome, awesome. All right, you guys. We got a little bit of a start pressing all of these last night and we're going to just kind of keep going with that tonight. So let me know how you're doing. It's good to be back and see all you guys. All right, let's see if we can get through all these. It's one of those important steps that just takes, takes its time. But yeah, then our quilt will be officially done. but I am excited for the auction. And um, another thing, you guys, we have face masks again in the, in the shop. Um, they're super nice. It's, they're made with organic cotton fabric and uh, they're uh, like, they're for adults, but um, they're especially nice for men because they extend kind of extra large and they're, uh, they expand to be extra, extra tall. So it's good if they have beards and stuff too. Um, and those are in the shop finally again. Cause we'll need those for a while yet. Oh, thanks Mary Jane. Mary, uh, says she likes the label. I think it turned out really pretty. So I drew that little border. So I drew, I drew this um, kind of, uh, what do they have? Like eucalyptus leaves. Um, I drew the border of that in, um, on the iPad. And um, I haven't printed anything like that that I actually drew on the iPad like that. And it turned out really pretty. Like there's different colors in there. Um, I'm really digging that border and I think it'll look really pretty with the the koala embroidery right above it. So I'll sew the koala embroidery to the top and then uh, I'll probably sew one of those other pieces of fab fabric and turn it right side out. I'll probably do that process and then I'm going to hand stitch the whole thing onto the back of the quilt. At least that's, that's my plan as it stands right now. Um, but yeah, so that'll be, that'll be the deal. That'll be fun. Okay. We 
got 28 of these to press, so hopefully, hopefully that doesn't take forever and ever. Ugh, you guys, it was so beautiful again here today. Oh no, Sylvia. Jeez, Sylvia said she got one and a half to two feet of snow. <laughs> oh my god. Like, we were in the, like, record-breaking, like, warm again for this time of year here. Ugh, and it's so beautiful. Oh, <laughs> Uh, my mom says thanks for jumping ahead to do the border how-to. So, if you didn't see Mondays, Mondays is where I really, where we kind of went through the whole process, kind of. Um, now we're just doing the, you know, manufacturing style process, where we do every step in full before moving on. Ultimately, that goes a little bit faster. Uh, but it's fun to see the process... Um, I, I like, I like doing just one, like one block or one part, if there's a lot all the way through, just to kind of make sure that I'm understanding it correctly and, um, that I'm, that I'm doing it right. So I think that went well, it makes sense. And now we're we're into just spitting it all out oh amy said we hit 70 today yep that's how it was by us too oh so freaking beautiful i loved it oh yes lisa and i think karen are, are wondering what happened last night um my whole system basically just conked out <laughs> uh and i couldn't get it back up so i think we should be fine tonight um I think my computer maybe was just running a little odd. So I cleared that up. I updated some programs and um, there's a little weirdness yet, but I think I can take care of that uh, when we're done here. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we're fine. But yeah, everything just quit on me and I couldn't get it back up and running. So sorry about that. That was not fun last night, uh, which also makes us still pressing but I think we'll hopefully get to some cutting tonight I always um, underestimate how long this stuff takes though the pressing pressing and cutting those two things I still don't have oops let's go this way I still don't measure time very well in my head for those those tasks First of all, I forget about those tasks, and then I don't measure that, don't estimate very well for that. Ugh, these are some cute combos coming up. Definitely heavily in the blue and white, so I think it's gonna actually look a little different than the quilt itself, because I think the quilt has a lot more variety in fabrics, but I wasn't thinking about that when when I was cutting the fabric here. I was just kind of using what I had because ultimately I think I had, I was, I was using large scraps for most of this. Um, so I probably just ran out of all the big stuff and used leftovers for, for these smaller strips because I could, not thinking that, oh, the smaller strips are for the border, so I should have maybe a variety of that too, but ultimately I think it's going to be just fine. Not going back now. I think this, like, three-part pressing seems to be working well for keeping the strips relatively straight. I was kind of having trouble with that with the smaller strips um, in the blocks. And I think we kind of discover like if I press the top, I think maybe let's let, let that warm up again. Um, press the top, then the bottom, and then in the middle, um, then I don't have any squiggles. When I was pressing in the middle first, I'd have like a big kind of, like this line would be just like wiggled and I, and I couldn't get out of it at that, after that. It was just um, stuck there. Oh, you guys, it's like warm here. It is, it's kind of like, it's too warm being above the iron. Like, isn't that crazy? It's, it's, uh, 
uh, getting into November and <laughs> I'm feeling too warm to use the iron is crazy. Then I always get it from the top too, just to make sure I have all these seams nice and um, open all the way. There's not any like little folded over part. Ugh, Jennifer, I hope you're gonna feel better soon. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Lisa says, so glad I have these videos to refer, uh, refer to when I tackle this quilt. Your splendid sampler one blocks were helping me currently, especially with embroidery. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Man, the Splendid Sampler 1, I feel like, was a lot of learning for me, for sure. Um, so I'm glad they're helpful for you. So I think if you want to learn with me, then um, that Splendid Sampler 1 is good for that. By, by the second Splendid Sampler, actually, by the end of the first Splendid Sampler, I'm like, dang, I know how to do all this stuff now. <laughs> uh, I kind of explain it, like, before the first Splendid Sampler, I feel like I could go into a room of like, you know, master quilters or whatever, and kind of know enough to get by, <laughs> like in a conversation or whatever. But after the first splendid sampler, I feel like I could definitely hold my own in a, in a, in a fictional room of um, master quilters like, like that. So um, definitely more confident in all of my quilting related skills after after that project which definitely has carried over to all of these other projects for sure 100 percent this one looks like a flag i like this one all right i'm just letting that warm up again i'm curious I'm getting picky or like uh, antsy now one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ugh. All right, so we're about uh, two thirds done. I'm telling you this, I have I've never relaxed into the pressing stage of it. Never just gotten to the point of like, oh, this is just so relaxing and chill and I love pressing things. <sighs> I keep trying to get to that point and it doesn't really happen. Oh, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca's saying I'm doing the Orophil Dolomites block and need to reference the video on it. Yeah, that was the, um, well, the Dolomites, um, the ones with like that, the, the mountains there. That was some, um, what did we do for that? We did like a applique with the iron on, um, oh gosh, what's that stuff called? The stick, the sticky, this, like we use the steam seam too, which I still have to order more of. Ugh, I should do that tonight. We're going to need that again someday, I'm thinking. Um, the fusible web. <laughs> uh, that, that fusible web. And then uh, stitched around the edges. Those are also pretty, I think. Um, that uh, the Orofil blocks of the month. That's been a fun project. And it's just fun to work on large blocks like that because I don't do that a lot here. <laughs> all of, Especially with the Splendid Sampler projects. Those are all pretty small blocks. Even these blocks, which feel big to me, are are only nine inches. The, um, the Orofil one are 12 inches. They don't fit on my little mat here. They're too big for that. I kind of like these ones with a lot of white in. I did want white to be kind of prominent in this quilt, 
which I wouldn't have done without our Pinterest research that we did on the first day of this project. Um, Cause the image I liked the most, like color wise, um, was this image of a woman walking and she had like these color clothes on, but it was really white. Like the background was really white. And I'm like, oh, I think I like all that white. <laughs> I know she's not wearing white or whatever, but it, this white in the photo, um, especially compared to some of the photos that I had that were just these colors. I, I like the one with all that white background. So I did make a conscious decision to have as much white stuff in here as I do, some as much light colored and white fabrics. And I know my brain wouldn't have done that on its own without seeing um, some of, the, of those examples, I think. All right, we're getting there. I think the heat in my iron is lasting a lot longer than I'm letting it last. Like I, I've, I've put it back into that, to the cradle a couple times and that's where it's heating up again. That's where it connects to electricity again. But I don't think I really needed to. I think I've been kind of fine this whole time. That's what's awesome about this cordless iron. It's not like you barely get enough out of it and then you have to put it in the cradle right again. It, it does last a long time. And I mean, we're doing a lot of repetitive ironing stuff that takes a while here, so. Um, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I think tomorrow I'm going to actually have an email go out a little bit about the koala quilt. We're going to get, we're going to get going on that. We're going to have our koala quilt auction soon, you guys. Um, and we're going to have a couple other fun things with that as well. So definitely uh, keep an eye out on your emails uh, starting tomorrow for sure. All right, a couple more. Come on. Oh, fun. Uh, Lisa says that these strips remind me of the flat taffy I would buy as a kid in the 70s. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it does look like that, like huge, doesn't it? I mean, these itself would make a really kind of fun quilt. Like all of these little bits, like if we just kind of like laid them like brick or something, like that would be pretty cool. I don't know, maybe a little sashing in there or something. Right, I think this is the last one. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! All right, so we are gonna start cutting. And I do like the idea from yesterday uh, where I'm kind of pre-jumbling them because I don't want the same ones next to each other. Um, I do think I'm gonna stack them a little bit when I when I cut them just because. Ugh! I don't think I can cut. 28. Oh gosh. Um, I'll, I'll do them like two at a time. I think that's plenty. So uh, we'll only have 14 different amounts to do. Not, not 28. Thank goodness. All right. Done. Let's get the cutting mats. Oh, the cutting stuffs. I think we'll just use this small ruler. Oh, I kind of hate this ruler though. Eh, but it's small and it's bigger than the other one. Okay. So next up, let's just double check. I think it's one and a half inch strips. We already have some here. I suppose I can just lay this down. Yeah, they're one and a half inches. Okay. So we already have a few. So remember we did two, two of these, um, on Monday and Tuesday, just to kind of try this out. And then we already did the corners. So we have four special little bits. These are the corners. Um, we don't need those quite yet. Uh, so I'm going to set those aside. 
set them with these, but I think we'll we'll get these guys out here again. Um, let's maybe start something going on over here for stacking. So I think we were getting six out of each, and the idea was why don't we start like kind of six piles, and then um. So each of those piles will have a different piece in it. Instead of stacking all of the, the same ones with the same ones, because I don't want to keep grabbing those at one after each other, I want, I want different ones in each pile. So we're going to just kind of throw together. Gosh, this takes up a lot of space, doesn't it? Okay, here and here. So we just kind of have... Uh, we're, we're artificially blending these all together, right? So I'm going to just put one in each of these stacks because I'm going to get six out of each of these. And then uh, if I pick from one, um, I can actually kind of shush them together at that point because this is still going to be kind of similar if I keep doing it. So I don't know. This will be the first attempt at um, having it be mixed up and then I think I'm still going to have to kind of fluff them up a little bit uh, but this is kind of like the start if that makes makes sense I don't want like the same ones next to each other over and over again so I still will have to blend these up all right anyway let's get going here I'm kind of just gonna lay one of these on the rule line so I know it's relatively straight and I'll put it over I'm gonna put it over one of the vertical lines as well, because that will be um, our little edge that we chop off just so we start with a nice straight line. Let's get another one on here. It's hard to do it with this on. So I'm just going to do two at a time. Gosh, I kind of want to do more, but eh, we'll do two at a time. Oh, I thought I was putting, yeah, I was going to put the fold on the line. All right, after this first one, I think we'll get the hang of this. All right, I think good enough, maybe. <laughs> Should probably do these one at a time. Okay, let's get a rotary cutter. Okay, and we'll trim off the one edge. We're not quite over the edge yet. We gotta scooch over. There we go. I think we got all the edges now. So I'm just making a really nice clean edge and then I'll rotate the whole piece and this is what we'll do our one and a half inch cutting off of. Get these guys out of the way. These little scraps I'll throw away. I won't save those for anything. But the other end, I will save. All right, this is gonna be a little weird with all my stuff everywhere, but I think it will still be easier to keep rotating like this. Okay, one and a half inches all the way across. And I think, what was it? We get six out of them. So this is what we sew together, and then all of a sudden it looks like we've sewed a whole pile of tiny little, oops, tiny little one inch squares together when really we cut these strips first. So it, it scooched on the mat a little bit, but as long as this these edges are still nice, that's kind of what I'm going on. And I think as long as we get close enough for all this, we'll be fine. Okay, four. Ooh. I think I need new sticky guys on this ruler. Okay, and last one. So I am going to keep these little edges, so I'll continue to sew those together like how we've been doing. Um, remember the this we've been we've been sewing together all of these little ends 
And uh, look, we're like actually making, you know, this cool freaking piece of fra fabric. And it's literally from all of these little ends sewn together. <laughs> and, you know, when you get rid of the two seam allowances, they end up being like super duper skinny. So we get these kind of interesting stripes. So I am going to save all those and I'll, you know, here's one that's, you know, got some started. And we'll just keep sewing them together eventually and we'll have a neat little improv piece like that so all the scrap really is just like this little edge that we're cleaning off okay so we got our six so i'm just gonna throw them on each on one of these six piles so it'll kind of start to be mixed up at least i won't have all of the same ones in the same pile that's that's really what i'm trying to avoid here more than um anything but I do want to kind of blend these together before I start sewing them. Um, okay, next up. That was one. One of 14 we got to do. I'm gonna actually stick some more of those on my ruler. So I have these, uh, these are those those true grips. I love these, but you know, they get kind of worn away. I think they just actually get kind of fuzzy. Um, this is just a scrap one. I think I have another thing of them in there. Oh no, I just have the scraps of that one. Well, uh, the nice thing is after you use all the circles, oh no, there's some in here. Uh, you can use, like, the little edge, too. But these are, like, little silicone stickers. And um, I think I just have to wipe off some of the ones that are already on here, and they'll be fine again. But I'm going to just throw some on here. It looks like I'm missing some. So let's let's go right there. They're see-through little um, silicone stickers. I think we're probably fine with that one. But I'll do one more just because I'll do, the like, the nubbin that was in the middle of it just because I, I don't know how effective that one is anymore. So we'll go down here with that one. And I think, yeah, let's see how that goes. Plop them back in. So that's uh, these True Grips uh, stickers again. All right, let's do it. And that, this has helped more than anything other, anything else that I've tried uh, so that the ruler doesn't slip. Like, it really holds well. I mean, I should really probably have one a little bit closer to my fingers here so that the pressure is being put on. But, you know, I'm moving around. I'm, like, moving my wrist. Normally, it would slide everywhere. Um, and it's it's holding pretty well. Like I said, I think if I had pressure on it right here, it would be a bit better. Still not too bad. All right, let's leave the ruler on. Maybe I can... Eh, no. I don't think that's a good idea. There. All right. One and a half. Oh, Dee Dee says that she uses the True Grip, those True Grip stickers too. They they really are my favorite so far. I've tried, and maybe I'm just not getting the right stuff, but I know some people have said to use, um, uh, like, that medical tape or whatever that's kind of grippy, next care or next whatever. I did get some of that, but I did not find it grippy at all, really. So I, I must be getting the wrong stuff, but um, I do just like these little stickers on here. They last a long time. Not forever, but for a while. And there's a bunch of them that come in the pack. I'm going to have to store these um, gently somehow. Because, so again, I don't want to, like, rough these up too much. At least not yet, because I don't... You know, I'm cutting through the seam. So if I pull on them, that seam's going to start popping apart. So I don't want to, like, I want to be gentle with these yet. 
until I'm right about to sew it. Then I might, you know, mix them up. Okay, more scrap. Go in my bin. Ooh. All right, so two more out of the 28. So 12 more of these to go. I'm thinking we will not finish cutting tonight, but I'm happy to be cutting it all, I suppose. Okay, next two. Oh, um, I just I just saw the end of that comment, but someone mentioned um, that someone used hot glue on the back. So that probably would give a similar feel, although I would really want that glue squished down. I wouldn't want it like a big ball of hot glue. So I would probably put the hot glue down and then take like parchment paper and really squish it as much as I could. So it was as flat because, you know, I want the ruler to, you know, as best it can lay flat on on the surface, but that seems like that would work too. And that would just pop right off when you're, you know, done using it too, probably. Whoa. I could probably put two sets on here, but I, I don't really want to risk that because I feel like I might shush them around a little bit and I don't want to do that. I am being careful at this point because I, I do have the stacked pieces and I don't want them to come apart and <sighs> all these little one and a half inch strips make me nervous so taking my time. Oh see now I just shimmy those apart a little bit. Kitty scratch them together a little. Oh, interesting. So Teresa says that um, she has a friend that uses a little a bit of basting spray on the, I'm guessing on the bottom of the ruler. So that probably just has like a slight tackiness to it. Hmm, that's interesting. That is one thing I haven't tried yet. So I know uh, there's lots of quilters out there that like swear by that, the uh, basting spray to base their quilts and it, when they use it, it looks so easy, but I don't know. I, I don't really have a good space to do that in any sort of aerosol spraying. Um, so I've kind of shied away from that, but just seeing how easy it is for the people that use it, I would like to, would like to test that at some point. Okay. I'm glad we're doing this thing where we're stacking them separately. I think this is going to work well. All right, we got a ton left yet. But we're getting it. I'm going to maybe try three here now. Might not be a great idea, but we'll see. We we'll probably do that thing where I stagger them a little and cut more, like how we were doing the blocks, but I'm a little nervous to do that too because we're cutting over a larger area. Oh, wow. Glad you survived. Uh, Denise says, hi from North Dakota. I survived COVID-19. Keep wearing those masks. That's, that's good advice. Thanks for... Thanks for sharing, and I'm happy you're feeling better. Ugh. That freaks, that's just like scary. We have the new masks in the shop if you, if you want some pretty solid colored organic fabric ones. <laughs> I know, uh... They're, John likes wearing his for sure, and I think it's because it does open pretty wide. 
um, wider than the typical mask. It opens, it expands to like eight inches, so it's nice for men or larger faces, but I like them too. And we have those filthy filters in stock again too, so we do have those as well, and every mask comes with one, like we, we include one of the filthy uh, filters with it. And then we have um, extras and packs. So that's been a long time coming and we got them, got them back in there now. I watched a whole like video or something like on, on Christmas trends. And that was like the trend was like that the biggest stocking stuffer is going to be, um, face masks. And it's just like, Oh man, that's crazy that we are living in a time where the biggest, uh, stocking stuffer is going to be a freaking face mask. Ugh. It's crazy town. Hi. I feel lucky to be kind of like a like a an introvert loner person cuz man um those poor outgoing friendly people <laughs> I think are having it kind of hard. Uh not kind of like definitely difficult during all this. I think this is, all this COVID is like right along my temperament line. So it hasn't been, um, you know, staying at home, you know, doing my own stuff. That's what I'd prefer to do anyway. <laughs> I'm just lucky that doing this stuff, um, was already what we were doing, basically. All right, that three worked fine. So I'm keeping on with the three, cause hello, let's get this done. Ah, Christy says she's a hyper extrovert and it's really bad. Oh, that's why you started a YouTube channel. That's awesome, Christy. Yeah, this has definitely helped me for sure. <laughs> Just being able to chit chat with you guys every night. I, I think that's probably taken a lot. That's like helped me a lot through this, even though I'm, you know, I like being at home and doing my own thing and whatever, but you know, I like, I like being by people too. And I think um, this would have been a long stretch to not see anybody. So this has definitely been helpful for me. I think John's had it, that part a little bit harder because he would see friends and visit people and stuff all the time um, or help people out with stuff. And he hasn't been able to do that. Ugh, I'd really like to get all these cut tonight. Hopefully we can get there. I mean, this could have been like a Walking Dead pandemic. <laughs> that would have been a, that would have been a bit harder um, for me, but easier for an extrovert probably, where you just gotta team up with people and make friends and alliances and get people to like you and <laughs> all all that. Be a leader, all, all that stuff. Ooh, 
Whew, man, it is toasty, toasty right now. Uh, we got quite a few here yet, but I'm happy about this cutting three at once. Makes me feel like I'm gaming the system a little bit. So that's fun. <laughs> Jolene says, I'm glad it wasn't a Walking Dead uh, pandemic. Yep. <laughs> Me too. I, John just got uh, through watching the last season of that. I, I had to stop at that last season. I'm like, I can't deal with this anymore. And now I can't watch any of that sort of TV. Like, the only TV I watch now is straight, feel-good whatever TV. <laughs> uh, like, it's so light, the TV that I watch now, but it's out of, like, necessity. I don't want, I don't want to watch some traumatic thing. I don't want to be on edge through a whole show, even if it's, I know all those shows are so well written, and they're so interesting, and they're really good, and I, and I do love them, but, ugh, I just can't deal. I just watched... On Netflix, I just watched all the entire series of um, Glee over, and before that, I watched The Good Place. I mean, like, so that's that's, and you know, of course, Great British Baking Show. When when those pop on, that's my TV right now. <laughs> that's about what I can do. And I, it's literally just on. It's kind of on instead of music for me, really. Just take all that sensory stuff and put it in a nice show, and that's, that's, I think I've been dealing with anxiety and stuff a little bit. <laughs> Amy says, do the Hallmark Horrible at Christmas movies. Funny. I never had any of those channels, so, um, we don't have cable like that, so, um, Never really got into all those. Oh, Seinfeld. Okay, Seinfeld. That's Lisa. That's a good. I, I need a new. I need a new series now because I ran out of Glee's. Seinfeld would be probably perfect. Um, yeah, that'd be a good one. I think that's on Netflix now, or that's that's on something right now. That might have to be my next next series. And it's all stuff I've already seen, <laughs> pretty much. Actually, I didn't see The Good Place um, before I watched them. But, uh, you know, I've seen all the Glees and all the Seinfelds. It's kind of fun watching them in order, though, because when I first watched all these, they were still on TV when I was watching network TV, uh, which I don't anymore. Um, it's fun to see them in bulk in order. <laughs> uh, so it's been fun revisiting old shows like that. So I think Seinfeld would be a good one in that arena. Oh, Schitt's Creek, I, I watched, I'm through all those, Noeline. Those are spot on awesome. Um, I think I've actually gone through those more than once. Um, not the last season, but the, um, I think I watched them all, and then I watched them all again, and then the last season. Uh, so yes, that would be a good one to watch from the start again, too. Just, that's a nice, airy, but lovely whatever show. I That's, that's, that's perfect for this time. Oh, I'm just reading through some of the comments. Uh, Teresa's asking, how often do I stream? I think, um, I think Rebecca answered, but uh, it's, I am on every weekday. So Monday through Friday, not the weekends. Um, 
for an hour about and at 8 30 p.m central central time i'm, I'm in minnesota uh, and then i do occasionally do a saturday and i have one of those coming up so that i will talk about that a little bit i think in tomorrow's email but not this saturday but the saturday after um, I will be doing a Saturday stitch along. So um, I'm going to say this a little bit in the email tomorrow as well. So make sure you check that out. But we are going to have a little bit different schedule for the embroidery of the month. I'm actually going to start it early. So um, we're going to stitch the embroidery of the month starting on Wednesday next week. So we'll, next week we'll have two days that we do the Splendid Sampler 2. We'll, we'll work on that. That's our normal thing for week two of the of the month is the Splendid Sampler 2 project. We'll work on that for two days and then I'm going to start on the embroidery of the month right away. So I'm I'm hoping uh, like so all those orders uh, if, if you put the order in today um, it hasn't it'll be going out soon but anything before today has gone out so I'm, I'm thinking you'll have your bundles by then or you should uh so we'll start stitching on Wednesday but I don't it's, you know so we'll do Wednesday Thursday Friday on that but I don't think we'll be done yet so we'll have a Saturday stitch along to finish up that project um so it'll probably be maybe two three hours on Saturday and that will be at 11 a.m. Central Time. So that, that'll be um, a shift in time just for that Saturday. And then the next week when we would normally be doing the embroidery of the month, we will be stitching our koala quilt label onto the back of the koala quilt. And that is also going to be the week for the koala quilt auction. So... Um, that will be coming up in after next week really so the 16th that's gonna start all right but more info on all that coming up for sure oh yay nora ordered uh, her bundle today Yep, I will be, um, I think I'm going to have to go to the office tomorrow, so I will probably get that out for you tomorrow. So you can get that done in time. getting there I think uh let's see one two three uh, one two three yes okay only two more we are I'm gonna just stay till we're done actually I think we'll be done right on time okay good this would have taken forever if I stuck to the two I mean I, I am being careful and I'm sure these aren't being cut perfectly but I think we'll manage and if every if every um seam doesn't match up absolutely perfect oh well i'd rather the seams not be perfect and get done with this cutting sooner <laughs> so that that trade-off is fine with me and the seams might still be perfect so that's the gamble for me right now is just cutting through all this So just another reminder, if you're, if you're noticing, I am turning the safety on every single time I'm immediately done cutting. <laughs> this is your, this is your friendly rotary cutter safety reminder. Uh, I got my glove on, uh, which I am now accustomed to. I actually feel super weird cutting without it. Um, this is to protect, you know, all those photos I've been seeing on Facebook of people cutting through their finger and having to get a whole pile of stitches. Like, no, thank you. Um, so I'm always, the safety's on. I never take it off until right before I cut. 
and I put it back on immediately. I have seen so many people just, you know, they finish their cut and then they set down the rotary cutter. Like, let's just set down the rotary cutter over there. The blade is fully exposed. It would be so easy to just like grab onto that and just slice through your finger. I mean, these are razor sharp. So try and get into that habit. Um, it, it will be a habit after you do it for a little. But ugh, freaks me out when I see... First of all, when I see all those Facebook posts of people cutting through their finger, but when I just see an open blade like that sitting on a table, I get, I get nervous. I actually get nervous cutting without a glove now, too. Um, so maybe I'm just a nervous person, but I'd rather... I'm, I'm helping my future self. How about that? <laughs> future self is, is thanking me. I always like, I always like when present self catches up with future self and it's like, oh dang, this thing's great. Future self helped me out here and I'm, I've caught up to that thing that future self helped me with. That's always fun, I think. Like, oh, I already cut up all the carrots for the for the soup. Thanks, future self. Now I don't have to do that. <laughs> that sort of stuff. Oh, smart. So Sylvia says, as I was getting gloves to help with machine quilting, um, you made sure that they were good for cutting too. Yeah, that's great. I, I actually really like these gloves for machine quilting too, um, with the rubber bottom. Yeah, because not all cutting gloves have the rubber bits. I mean, this is fully rubber, but some just have like the little dots. Not all cutting gloves have that. Some gloves are just smooth like that, and you can't use those for quilting because it won't grip on anything and you actually can't really use it for cutting either like this because they'll slide all over the ruler so make sure when you do find cutting gloves they're like kitchen cutting gloves or like you know hardware cutting gloves it's meant so you don't like you know stab yourself with a saw or something right um or a cutting knife like a um a chef's knife or something um but not all of them have the grip, so you'll want the ones with the grip if you're looking for some of these. Um, and quilting gloves, sometimes they only come in packs of one, which is annoying. Or like quilting cutting gloves. So if you're looking specifically in a quilting realm scenario, like a quilt shop or something, for cutting gloves like this, they'll oftentimes just be the one and then have rubber on both sides so you can do it with either hand. I have one of those and it's fine, but these hardware store like ones are, are nicer, I think. And these ones in particular, I like because they're small. Um, usually, and my, and they, my fingers almost <laughs> go up to the tip on these, maybe not on this finger uh, or that, but like ugh, usually gloves are so tight in the fingers and like this long on me. So, um, I, I this is the only pair that has been short enough so they're they're comfortable these particular ones but yeah I, I feel like I'm finally kind of used to the idea of a cutting glove I mean it it it's awkward still for sure and it's annoying to have to take it off every time I'm done cutting but I don't know I feel a lot safer now <laughs> and I I definitely have the habit of opening and closing the rotary cutter. Like, I don't even think about that at all. It just, I just do it. So that's nice. All right, I think we just have one set left. Yay. Awesome. Oh, wait. Uh, now we got four here. So I'm going to do two. this in two sets. I thought we just had three, but there's... There's four. Or maybe I only cut two in that last one. I don't know. So, all right, we're going to do two sets. Um, I don't 
I don't trust me cutting through four. Um, so we'll do, we'll just do two rounds here. Thought I was done, but not quite. Oh, Jennifer says get butcher's glove. They're, they're kind of like, oh, kind of like chains. Oh, interesting. So, huh. I wonder how well that would work. So I have, I've seen those used not quite with um, a ro like with um, a ruler and a rotary cutter, but I have seen at like industrial sewing places, like for example, like if they're making jeans, they'll have like a layer this fat, you know, on the table of fabric, and then they'll use like a huge like saw. I have seen uh, those chainmail gloves used in that case because they're just kind of holding things down and you know then it's full chain mail but I don't I don't think there's any grippies or any of that on on those I suspect butchers wear it for the same reason so like a bandsaw doesn't go through their hand so they got the big chain mail glove we do have that industrial like rotary cutter at the warehouse and we've been talking about trying to find um, I haven't really looked yet. I should I should maybe look looking for a chainmail glove for that. I think it's actually pretty safe. There's a safety on there, and um, so I actually don't think we really need that. But there is that little idea of a safety factor. So maybe I'll still look for one of those chainmail gloves for that. And they'd just be kind of fun to have. I love all those like weird little goofy things. Ah, uh, okay. Nolene says there very expensive those uh are you talking about those like butcher chain mail things have not looked but i i would assume that would probably be the case seems like a weird specialty item that someone probably has to like make by hand really oh <laughs> thanks jill jill says uh, I was going to compliment you on using your glove and closing your blade uh, because I'm like you. It scares me watching some someone cut without it. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's funny. Yep. Uh, and the more that I cut with it, I mean, you know, you still have to be safe and everything. But yeah, just the idea of cutting without it, it just seems like one little slip and you're fully sliced through a finger and that just sounds horrible <laughs> uh, i think i'd probably pass out is probably what would happen so that'd be fun Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> that happens here someone start emailing or john right away because <laughs> i'll probably just pass out right here on the table <laughs> Ugh. Scares me. All right, here's the last one. Okay, line that up. All right. So this, we got this done just in time. So this is great. So we finished a whole step and uh, um, next time we work on this, so we won't work on this tomorrow. So tomorrow is actually finish it Friday. Um, the first Friday of the month, we take a break from what we're working on and um, do something else. Um, which, you know, now that we're doing our weekly schedule, that that's kind of throwing a wrench into our first week uh, project because whatever we have for the first week project, we always have that finish, finish it Friday. But anyway, I think we are ending this on a nice step, and I think I want to work on that, uh, the dino dress up some more. So I think I have that behind me here. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll show you that again. So we'll work on that tomorrow. That's been so much fun. So that's my Tyranno 
embroidery kit, but now when you get the Tyranno embroidery kit from the website, uh, we have a instant um, download with it as well, and it's a Tyranno dress up, so you can actually, it's like a paper doll, so you can actually choose different clothes and stuff. Uh, right now it's basically win some winter gear and some summer gear, um, but it'd be fun to do more. Uh, but you can actually dress up your your Tyranno, your Tyrannosaurus Rex, um, from from the kit, and it's looking so cute so far. We made the cutest, cutest hat for him, uh, which was one of the designs. But we did the turkey work stitching for the for the um, pom pom on on top of the hat, and. Uh, that turned out so cute. So let's let me show you what I got going on here first, and then we'll take a look at that quick. All right, so I have my six sort of stacks, and the, you know the only reason that, that I did it in six stacks is well because each one had a cut. But now when I grab from these to sew them together, there's going to be different ones. Um, after each one versus if I stack them all together, then I would have had a lot of the same ones next to each other. I might even mix this up more. So um, I'm gonna leave them all clean for now because I don't want to hurt the edges at all. So I will let them lay like this in my box, in my storage box. But then when we sew them, next time we're gonna come and sew these. I think we'll work on the border some more uh, just because we haven't quite gone through the whole process here. Um, I'd love to work on this a little bit uh, next month, and I'm just gonna shush it up then, and then I'll start just picking twos. I'll I'll sew I'll sew two together until I'm out, and then I'll sew those two groupings of two together into four until I'm out again, and then at that point I will decide on groups of eleven because I need four groups of forty-four. So I'll get them into bits of four first. Um, at random, and then uh, um, then we kind of can plop them together after that. So these are going to just stay nice. Uh, let me grab that dino to show you again. All right, so I took him out of the took him out of the hoop for now, but I'll get him back in the hoop. So this is so this is from the kit. Um, this is the normal, this is our normal pattern, right? Just the little dinosaur. Um, there we go, the, just the plain, the, the naked Tyranno. And then we have, this is the new thing. So the Tyranno dress up extras, um, the Tyranno, Tyranno dress up pattern. And these are just like little, little ice skates, little shoes. Um, there's a, like a puffy jacket, some shorts. Um, he's got a mask and just like some hats for him so you can actually dress him up and we have a few few examples on the cover we got a little Santa one a little summer one uh, but we put together um, we did the little poofy coat some ice skates and then the little hat but look at how the hat turned out Ugh, so cute so this is all fuzzy this is turkey work or like a turkey uh, work embroidery stitch and then we did some chain stitches and stuff, but uh, I think he's turning out so cute So we will um, I think we'll get his coat done his little um, His poofy coat and that'll be that'll be great. So all right. So thank you guys again uh, There we go uh, that'll be fun tomorrow and it, this has been great just getting through this cutting and pressing process because man that's the stuff that takes forever. <laughs> and we'll be back to sewing on the granny square quilt next time. So I'm, that'll be great. So thank you guys again. And I will see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for your emails tomorrow as well. Have a great evening. Good night.